So um So this is the this is the companion piece to the five minutes. The companion? You're quite right. I, I can realise that, but that's what I do. I repeat what you say, I think. Mm -hmm. The companion piece. So, so we did the five. I'm sort of an auto cue. <laughs> In a sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the the promise that is like Yes, that's what we were meant to be talking about. Thank you, Arthur. Um, so we did just talk about five different aroma chemicals that you can put into floral fragrances. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is because, well, actually three of them do come from flowers. So if you're going to try and make a flower, you might as well use things that flowers produce. Mm -hmm. But these, these came out of a lab. This one I missed out. Uh, oh. Uh, it's one of the biggies. I. Oh, wow. So this is number six. We talked about hydrofleur, geraniol, benzyl acetate, methyl ionine gamma, and phenyl ethyl alcohol, which we'll come back to. This one is benzyl salicylate. Mm. So this is in a lot of white flowers, and it's also used in sun tan lotion because it is a protector sunscreen so sunscreen so early sunscreens all had this so now it's become associated with the sunscreen smell so mm. if you want to create a kind of summery what's called a solar fragrance people will put benzyl salicylate into it to evoke that seasidey smell mm. yes it's very so it, it, it just makes it's me feel a creaminess inside my... It's very sultan. Yes. Boots, sultan. I'm sure it's in there. Um, when I go to, I obviously recently went to go and get buy some sun cream. Mm. And I was going to go and get one of the more fancy ones. And then I just went, no, I want sultan. It smells so great. And it has many memories of happy... Um, trying not to get burnt times. Yeah. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you. Um, so, what I thought we would do is create a flower. I'm just, I didn't write them down in our five points. Yeah. So I'm just, I got out my methyl yeah, iron gamma, and then methyl gamma and benzyl is like. I think, yep. Yeah. You well, probably want the benzyl acetate. Well, I want some of that in it, yeah. But, however, mm -hmm. what I think is that the, what was it, the two that basically smell like rose together? Yes, geraniol and phenyl ethyl alcohol. Yes. Let's steer clear of making a rose, okay. because rose exists. Right. We're yes. making a flower that doesn't exist. So, maybe those two, I think, we... Unless we make a, a new kind of rose. We, we could. But, so, fantasy flowers, they're called. Mm. Things like um, Kenzo's poppy. It's called Kenzo flower, but it has a poppy on the box. Mm -hmm. And poppies don't give off an aroma. They're just, no. they do it by sight. Yeah. So, there's a lot of flowers which are very pretty but don't smell. Because that's the way they attract insects to them. There are others which are tiny but do smell. Is it that they just don't smell to us, or they, they don't? You know, that's a very good question. And I cannot believe <laughs> I've never thought about <laughs> it before. <laughs> well, I mean, if it doesn't smell to us, in, ter in perfumery terms, in perfumery it doesn't smell at all. Well, but yeah, what if the bees, in fact, can smell poppies, and they're yeah. not attracted by the colour at all? Well, we just made that up. Have you seen, have you seen, you know, lots of flowers under infrared light, uh, not infrared, um, ultraviolet light and stuff, that where they, uh, petals seem to have sort of stripes facing oh, inwards, so it's right. like landing stripes it's and stuff, like, yeah. directing insects where to go. You're right. Maybe that's what they're picking up, not the... Because you know they, different flowers come out at different times, the different yeah. colours. You get the the yellow and blue ones first in the year, oh, yeah. and then different colours tend oh, to... Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Um, so it seems like different insects need different things at different times. So where... So what what's the colour out there at the moment? That's a good question. The lavender's all coming out right now, isn't it? Mm. But there are so many 
bread flowers rather than wildflowers. And the mallow is coming out. That's a kind of a mauvish colour. This is the jazz orange that we had last week. Yeah, it's cool, isn't it? It's great. Yes. Orangey jasmine. Um, fantasy flowers. Also, a um, uh, black orchid. Tom Ford. Yes, of course. There aren't any orchids which are black. Most orchids don't have a smell. So. It's a good perfume, though, isn't it? Absolutely. It's on that shelf somewhere. Yeah. It's the idea is that what if a black orchid have an aroma? What would it smell like? This. That's the plan. Yeah. It's pretty spot on. So which? Oh, I made one, of course. I made the darkest blue. Yeah. Yes, the smell of the Dakai flower. From? From a fantasy novel. Um, is that the Rivers of London? Series? No, that's no. P.M. Freestone. Um, uh, the Crown of Smoke, was it? In, it was in Crown of Smoke and it's in The Darkest Bloom. Um, uh -huh. The Darkest Bloom is the name. The Darkest Bloom book. is the name of that uh -huh. book, yeah. Um, so, yes, I made that. But I did put lots of other flower materials in there. I used Osmanthus Absolute, for example, and some actual florals and then mixed them together and decorated them. What I thought we'd try and do today is just take the molecules. Yeah. There's a uh, little inspiration point, maybe. Mm -hmm. In the book I'm reading at the moment, Alan Moore's Jerusalem, Yeah. there is a plant in it called a Puck's Hat. Puck as in, you know, from Midsummer Night's Dream. Okay. And so it, Pug's hat as in no. like, small, I was picturing Puck. a small dog no. that does that and has it, you know. A no. Puck's, Puck's hat, hat. Yes. is a flower that grows in the spirit realm of right. where the ghosts are. And the ghosts hunt these, there the are ghosts wandering the streets all the time in this book. And they look for these little Puck's hats which grow between the cracks in the pavement. Right. But they, 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 the roots grow upwards. Okay. Into the, into the sky. They're like little flowering radishes little white flowering radishes and the ghosts find them and that's what they eat. Well, I think that we, we could can, make a pox hat. We have to make pox hat. I wonder if we can find do, a description of it. Do we need it to have a certain rootiness to it then? Quite possibly. Or I to be getting some earthy aromas around. I think maybe it needs clear wood in it, so go away. Mm -hmm. Not like going away, I'm going to find some inspiration. Okay, well I think that's a marvellous idea. Um, I feel the pox hat coming on. Um, so, so do we ever actually see the flower or do we only ever see the root? This I don't remember. Okay. I brought the aldehyde C10 as well. Uh, it just... They're also known as bedlam jennies. Uh. But he doesn't give him a Latin name. I can't. Anyway, yes. Okay. I'm not going to be able to find something quickly here. That's fine. Well, how about I start making a Puck's Hat perfume? And so the ghost realm and their white. Well, we'll have to put some benzyl acetate in because you liked it. Yes. But also, um, it's in a lot of white flowers and ghosts are kind of milky and disappearing. Um, a, a, a Puck's hat, alternatively known as a Bedlam Jenny or Whispers in the Wood or Devil's Fingers, um, as well as the better developed Fairy. Uh, uh, and the fairy or spaceman varieties. Uh, it turns out ghosts, or at least people who are rough sleepers in the book, still exist in the boroughs. The Puck's hats are about the only things they can eat that give any form of additional flavour or vitality in the otherwise thin and grey existences. It's the revel. Uh, yeah, that is great. Uh, I like all the alternative names. I'm, I'm yeah. thinking Whispers in the Wood myself. Whispers in the Wood's nice, yeah. Whispers in the Wood. Um, well, given what we've got out here at the moment, mm -hmm. so 
Okay, I'm going to put into this little bottle where we'll do a sample uh, 0.3 grams of benzyl acetate. So it's just a little, and this is at 10%. That is. Benzyl acetate being the, benzyl the acetate jasmine one. Is the jasmine, plasticky, doll's heady, fruit chews one. Acetate sounds plasticky, doesn't it? It's a word. Yeah. Like acetone. It's yes, but that's not. That's the problem with some of these things, is that they sound like other things, like labdanum and laudanum, and they're very different. I was also thinking about. Uh, carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. Yes. You know, carbon monoxide will kill us all in a very short space of time. Carbon dioxide is responsible for all plant life mm -hmm. on Earth. Mm -hmm. And uh, and if you don't know the difference, then people can be very easily um, killed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or 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 terrified. People mm -hmm. can be manipulated yeah. into terror because. They don't know the difference. Um, what else are we adding to this? Do we want some phenylethyl alcohol in there? Do we want the rosiness? Yes. So, do you on um, today's a very hot day? It is. Do you, um, what does that does that change things in terms of making perfume? What we just have to be a little bit careful about is how quickly it evaporates. Mm -hmm. It would be better to be uh, downstairs in the lab where it's cooler. Mm -hmm. But for the purposes of this, it still said 0.3 when I I left it. it. Not that much is going to evaporate in no. any time. But I say if people are trying to work in things like 0.03 or tiny amounts, they're probably asking for trouble. Mm -hmm. there. If you work in tiny amounts in trying to save money, you know, which I don't blame them for, but in temperatures like this, so much, such a higher proportion of it will evaporate before they have the chance mm. to really find out how accurate it is. And then, so they'll measure a tiny amount of that out, they'll come back, measure another tiny amount of something else, and then it's disappeared. When they come to recreate it in future, it smells absolutely nothing like the original test. So um, it, it will expand a little bit, but because we're weighing everything, that's yeah. not too terrible. I have put in 1.2 grams of phenylethyl alcohol. And the reason is, it's a lot softer. Yeah. It's not so dominant. So um, now, I would not normally smell from the bottle, but I don't want to dip things in. So I'm going to let you smell it from the bottle. So. Um, oh yeah, wow, they smell great. Mm. And it's it smells like our flower, but you it can see which flower like... it is. Yeah, yeah. That's that's my aim, and obviously we want it to be whispers in the wood, also known as Puck's hat, also known as what was Bedlam it? Dev Jenny. Bedlam Jenny. Devil's fingers. Devil's as well, fingers. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. With all of which are. Completely different in their implications. So it's like, yeah, whispers yeah. in the wooden devil's fingers. It's like, but so are lots of um, so are lots of actual plant names when you. Yeah. Lots of them contradictory. Um, I, I think that's what's so really interesting about the way he wrote that. Yeah. That, so I thought the hydrofleur. Yes. Um, I'm just thinking about the ghosts. Having... The ghostly realm is very, grey and slippery. Yeah. Everything has ripples. They see. They see ripples and everything. So, uh, I'm I'm all for a bit of rippleage. Let's ripple it up with some mono hydrofleur. Ripple it up and start again. Sorry. I'm putting in 0.5 grams of this, and I'm just you know we'll see. I I think. Um, that these ingredients, ingredients? Mm, yeah, materials, right ingredients, both these things, yeah. The thing that strikes me about this, about all of these, is that they're so agreeable. Mm. Um, and they're so agreeable with each other. Yeah. It feels like it's not a matter of whether or not it's going to smell nice, it's a matter of, of 
just whether it achieves off. what you want it to achieve. I think yeah. that's not unreasonable to say. Although I think the benzyl acetate for me still, I don't find it that agreeable. Okay. Yeah. Um, I know that people, some people think that the methyl ion and gamma is just way too um, a violety. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, I don't know, whispers in the wood. I do have the aldehyde C10, which is quite waxy in your face. Do you want to smell yeah. it? Um, as I, I'm not a big fan of aldehydic floral fragrances. I've just dipped a little bit. Uh, but this is one of the, what's known as the fatty aldehydes, the aliphatic aldehydes, aldehydic grass. The, there are lots and lots and lots of aldehydes. When people talk about aldehydic perfumes, they generally mean this sort. I'm using a, I'm using a, a very, well, I think, unhelpful descriptor a lot today, but Do it we? smells very wet. <laughs> I'm, I'm stuck with sort of, if somebody made a candle in the shape and smell of an orange and then set fire to it. I'm sort of, it's, it's, it's dripping mandarin scented candle wax for me, this, and yet cold. That's making it, that's making it smell nicer to me because I was smelling, I was going, oh, this is definitely in Secretions Magnifique. <laughs> well, I think, I think one, at least one of the fatty aldehydes I think is, but I'm, I, I couldn't swear to it. And, <laughs> They aren't for me. I find them cold and. Um, it's not for me either. But if we either. wanted to make it less agreeable, you know, we're talking about yeah. them being agreeable with each other. Sometimes I think putting something in which you think you're not going to like it just makes it much more interesting. Are we doing it? We're doing it. Yeah, great. But tiny amount. Yeah. And it's only at one percent. Great. So I'm just going to put in. That's 0 0.05 grams. Mm. And that's absolutely fine. So. It smells like. <laughs> Fun. I'm getting I'm getting a real whiff of the rim the rim of an old man's hat. <laughs> like a. They are they are oily things. Yeah. <laughs> you see, it it has not made it worse. I'm gonna let you have a little whiff. The the reason it's not too bad mm. whiffing out of these bottles is they're very narrow. What you definitely don't want anybody ever to do is to take one of these and just get too much up their nose. It's always better to smell off paper, but yeah. under the circumstances when we're working in small amounts, I don't want to mess up the proportions. I think that aldehyde has made it creamier. Hmm. So like. I, th I don't mind aldehydes on hot days because I find them very chilly. So if I, I, yeah, I have to be careful which days I use them on. But I can wear dough in the snow, which is quite aldehydic, on a very hot day and love it. Whereas in the snow, it's too mm. chilly for me. Mm. Um, so we're, well, we haven't used the benzyl salicylate, which is the suntan lotion. Or oh. is that wrong for ghosts? Is it right for ghosts? Oh, who cares what it, whether it's okay. right for ghosts? It smells lovely. Yeah. <laughs> There's that. That's the most important thing, I think. Um, you know, if we were doing this properly, okay. I would have actually found some excerpts of text. <laughs> I, I don't think it, that's really important today. I think what's important is that we just invent a flower. And yeah. the fact that you found one to work on there is just perfect. Okay, so I've put in 0 0.8 grams of that. Because my the, the task this month mm -hmm. is um, to make, for the students, to make a fantasy flower. And in fact, I just got some um, new old stock trousers from eBay, Catherine Hamnett, with fantasy flowers all over them. So I've Ooh. taken their photograph. And we're going to try and create the your trousers. <laughs> my trousers, <laughs> my flowers. Have, so why not? Because they're they're not real. They're mm. weirdy colours and weirdy shapes. And I thought that would be perfect. So there's no saying whether this is wrong or right. It's just like if that's what you have in your mind. Um, now I did think about adding clear wood mm -hmm. because these are upside down roots. Yeah. 
clear wood is a sort of an immensely clean patchouli. Would you like a reminder? Yes, please. So. So I'm getting. It, I know I'm getting mixed up with dream wood. Base. Yeah, dream wood base smells like sandalwood. Oh, ah, uh, yeah, I know this. Very clean patchouli. I think it has to go in. I'm just thinking if they grow the wrong way up and they're sort they of do, taking yeah. the roots and the roots are out in the air. I thought that might that might work. Yes. Okay. I agree. And of course if we are going to do this properly we could make XT different versions of it. But um I can put in half a gram, 0.5 and and probably decide that it's finished. Mm just for this the purposes of how warm how long can we be up here before we actually melt i mean i won't obviously because i'm immune <laughs> but i don't want to melt you uh my eyebrows so i just need to leave it about a bit and then we will smell it and name it Whispers in the Wood or Bedlam's Fingers. Bedlam Jenny, I'm not so sure about Bedlam at being Danger. the Bedlam Hospital for the dangerously not allowed out in the streets. Yes, she used to be in Lambeth. A, a terrible place. Thank you. Well, uh, is there still a building? I, I don't know, I'm feeling it must have gone. They must have demolished it. Cause it's my it's my area of London, isn't it? Bedlam. What do you mean? Mm. Well, it certainly isn't a flower I've ever smelt before. It's absolutely lovely. That's all right then. It's still deciding what it is at the moment on the strip. I think it's it is. I think I mentioned this last time. The mm -hmm. when you get right up into a into a flower. Mm. Uh, and I said it just earlier, the, right down in the depth of the petals, you can smell the moisture it retains. Mm -hmm. It's holding. To me. I can smell it. I feel. And that's what this has got. So it's I have one last question then before we've... And do we need geranium? Um, yeah, are you, well, yes, for the, purposes <laughs> of, for the purposes of experimentation, yes. For the purposes of experimentation. I mean, of course, one could come back and do a lot of different versions of this before one decides that it is exactly what one wants. And put, what so I'm smelling here is a very fresh flower. In the, um, and when I say fresh, I mean hip and trendy. Oh, okay. I don't mean, you know, you mean, laundry. You I mean, mean you think this is almost buyable? Yeah. You wouldn't be at all surprised to find it actually in a fragrance somewhere. No. Interesting. I really wouldn't. Somebody, yesterday, one of my, my three visitors who booked me for the afternoon mm -hmm. from LA, one of the ones, uh, one of them produced was to use the Jasmine Etoile Jivko that I had a sample of. I think they've stopped making it. But that plus ethylene brassolite and in fact it was the whole temptation base um, that I put together to make things smell nice and it smelled just like you'd buy it in a shop I mean it smelled like a commercial perfume mm. which and normally when I do that is by accident and I wouldn't allow it out but it was very interesting that that occurred because mm. he was making it for his girlfriend and it's just like, Oh, actually, no, that one was one for his mom. Mm. He did the rose one for his mom. Nice. So, yeah. Uh, yes, I wouldn't normally. Make one. That was a long gap. <laughs> I wouldn't normally. <laughs> I wouldn't normally uh, purposely make one that smelt like it was commercial. 
Maybe one day I ought to. No. There you go. <clears throat> Everyone Did else you? is trying to make commercial things. I want to make things that mm -hmm. smell like Puck's hat. Okay, yeah, you just knocked it off the commercial. <laughs> I like it better. Now it's something more interesting. I like yeah. it better with it. But the geranial, I mean, geranial is in almost every floral fragrance in the universe, so it's not, mm. it's, it's not an unusual thing to do. I'm just spending some time away from it for a minute. Okay. So I just smell it properly. I'm going to find a cap. Okay. That's, 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 the, that's the purpose of what um, we're doing today. How do I find it? Oh, yeah. Uh, dearly, be, be, dearly beloved, we are gathered here. Oh, yeah. To no, it's better. I like it much better. Invent a flower. Okay. So, today's lesson. Yeah. Always add geranial. <laughs> that could be it. If in doubt. Well, I think today's lesson is, if in the back of your mind you're thinking, mm, yeah, maybe it could do a little bit of, it probably does. If you're thinking, I wonder what would happen if I put in, then don't do it. It's just different. Yeah. If you're in Unless full you've got on, endless resources. Exactly. If you're on full-on experimental mood, when you've got, you're going to do 43 different versions of it, then I wonder what happened if we just did that would be great. Yeah. But if you think you're almost there, then you probably want to avoid the, oh, I don't know what would happen if we just bang. But you can go, you yeah, know, oh, do you know what? I think it just needs a tiny bit of... Yeah. But that probably only happens after you've had a bit of practice. I don't know. Mmm. Brilliant. I need to put, I'll put a label on it. Which of the names? Pox Hat, the first name? I think it's a Whispers in the Wood. Okay. Whispers in the Wood. I think I can fit that on one small movie. Will. Wit woo. Wit woo. Wit woo. Yeah. Wit woo. <laughs> I'm going to write Whispers in the Wood. I can fit it in. Okay. Uh, it is. Done.